Russia began sending disabled men to the Ukrainian front. Russia began sending disabled men to the front to participate in hostilities, according to Oba's Revitel media outlet. So recently, a video appeared on the internet with Russian soldiers who have the status of temporarily unfit, but the military command wants to send them to the front line. Petro Andriushchenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, announced this on his Telegram channel. The soldiers complain that the military command of the Russian Federation sends whole groups of disabled occupiers, some of whom cannot even move without crutches, immediately from the hospital back to the front. Although, according to doctors' conclusions, they need further treatment and operations. Also, Russian soldiers say that they are denied the status of a war veteran due to disability and are not paid. The Russian regime is so humane and values its own population that it sends a cripple to the front straight from the hospital. This is Russian humanity. Ironically, Petro Andriushchenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. Earlier, it was reported that the occupying forces lost a huge number of personnel during one of the assaults. The agent of the military movement of Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars, Atesh, reported the corresponding information. Some media outlets reported earlier that Russia sends its injured and disabled soldiers back to fight on the front lines amid troop shortages, he said. According to Russian independent media outlet iStories, the Russian media of defense changed its rules, enabling it to send soldiers with severe injuries back to fight against Ukraine. Under the ruling, medical examiners deciding whether to redeploy injured soldiers should consider whether troops have frontline experience and not rule them out on the basis of injuries that do not have a significant impact on the ability to perform the duties of military service. As a consequence, units of hundreds of disabled soldiers have been formed without the soldiers having been properly examined by medics or receiving adequate care, families of the soldiers told the outlet. Turkey faced a series of devastating wildfires over the weekend, severely impacting the Izmir region. The fires, which began in various parts of Izmir, have caused significant damage to forested areas, with hundreds of hectares burned. The combined efforts of local and national firefighting teams have brought the situation under control, but the scale of the disaster is still unfolding. Among the most affected areas were the Selçuk and Menderes districts, where fires spread rapidly due to strong winds. The fire in Sesame was traced back to a discarded cigarette butt, highlighting the human factor in the outbreaks. The extent of the damage became apparent at dawn, revealing scorched lands stretching to the borders of neighboring province Aydın's Kusadasi district. Minister of Agriculture and Forestry of Turkey, Ibrahim Yumakli, announced that the intensity of the fire in Balakizer Susurluk has been significantly reduced and that interventions in the fires in Izmir Selçuk and Menderes are ongoing. Fires in Sesame and Torbali, Izmir, on the west coast of Anatolia have been brought under control, while efforts continue to manage the fires in Selçuk and Menderes. Minister Yumakli confirmed that the selçuk Kusadasi road is closed as a precaution, and no residential areas or facilities are at risk, although some people were affected by the smoke, there are no health threats. As emergency services continue to assess the damage and conduct cooling operations, the full extent of the impact is becoming clearer. Authorities have issued warnings for the coming week, predicting intense winds and high temperatures, which could elevate the risk of further fires. They urge the public to exercise caution and report any suspicious activities immediately to prevent another disaster.